the next two slides focus on um, a couple of key points, that, and that includes the chemistry on the surface of the flow cell, as well as the sequencing chemistry. And I'll also mention what's shown in the uh, lower middle and right-hand side of the slide in just a moment. So element surface chemistry is an entirely uh, new surface chemistry in the sequencing field and was developed to have as low a background as possible uh, under biological conditions, both sequencing as well as, as well as other conditions. And what you're seeing here is uh, the proof of this low binding surface, which in the case of a, a higher background binding surface looks like this. If we take these same biological, biological conditions and apply them to the element surface chemistry, you can see there's just this very faint outline of this very bright uh, white dot. And this enables the element to have a very high contrast to noise ratio, which of course is related to signal to noise, but we often refer to it as, as more important to have a high contrast to noise ratio. A good example of uh, the difference between high signal to noise versus contrast to noise is thinking of the uh, of observing stars in, in the nighttime sky where the stars are not very bright, but they're easy to observe because the background behind them is very low and therefore the contrast is high versus during the daytime where those same stars are there, but they're just not observable because of the background light from the sun. And so that's a, maybe a, an analogy to understand element surface chemistry. So high, high contrast to noise ratio. Now, very interestingly, these other images you see here for single molecule antigen detection, as well as this, this cell detection, these were also captured on the sequencer and both with the optical system as well as with the surface chemistry. So showing that it has a very extendable um, use possibilities. Now, this is certainly not to suggest that the platform has been designed uh, specifically or we're launching it as anything other than a DNA sequencer. What we're really showing is two things. One is that the surface chemistry and the optical system uh, has quite a bit of uh, opportunity for additional use in the future, because um, we want to give confidence that investment in the machine may pay dividends in other areas beyond sequencing over time. And the other is, as I mentioned earlier, Element is very committed to opening up biology and opening up biology to uh, many different investigations. And so we look forward to working with researchers from around the world of coming up with new and novel applications for these surface chemistries and sequencing chemistries. But just we thought, and if I uh, it, you know, allow this movie to play, you can see that the, this, this antigen antibody interaction that's shown on the field was, was also again done in a cyclic manner captured with the sequencer. So there's a variety of, of opportunities for us to uh, uh, move, that, move that forward. So I'm summarizing some uh, highlights that I'll go into a little bit more detail on the right-hand side of the slide. And, and as I mentioned, the, from two, 2018, this is what some of our surface chemistry with uh, DNA molecules looked like. And then through a rapid evolution process over the last couple of years, um, this is how the sequencing field of EU looks as of 2020, and, and it's continued to be optimized. So this is a, we use a random flow cell. It's not, it's not a pattern flow cell. It is a four color imaging system, one color per base. Some of the clear areas for differentiation that we see is a very, very low optical duplication rate on the sequencer. Um, these four different colored bars shown here are four different library types and four different applications on the element platform. This is the comparison of uh, one of those same libraries on a competing platform, uh, the market leading platform as far as in installed base, as well as one of our competitors uh, shown here. This very low optical duplication rate is related to the amplification method that's used on the platform, which is a rolling circle amplification. So we do not, we do not generate high degrees of uh, duplicate molecules, nor do we generate chimeric molecules, which allows index hopping to be negligible to the non-existent. So our specification is an index hopping rate of less than 0.5%, which is shown with this red dotted line. But what we observe under the same four conditions that were shown here, were also used to measure this. So this is four different library types with several replicates of each library type over different runs. You can see in reality, most of our index misassignment rates are less than 0.2%. And the reason for this misassignment rate is actually not due to the formation of chimeric molecules, but is actually due to image registration errors, which are very, very minor, but can occur. Um, and we're, we're continuing to uh, upgrade and, and modify our algorithms to bring these even these very minor levels down further. 
what's shown at the top is our is our quality score versus number of read pairs. So I mentioned in the specification of the instrument is 800 million. And this is this is just a plot showing the effect of data quality as the instrument is overloaded. And so this gives that flexibility in that for the highest quality data, you can target between 900 million and 1 billion reads per flow cell and have as much as 97% Q30. But if you're performing counting applications or applications where the quality scores are not, or the highest quality scores are not necessarily required, and you're willing to sacrifice a small percentage of Q30 scores here, dropping down to 93 to 94% in this area, you can get about 40% more data out of the platform um, sequencing at one point up to 1.3 billion reads. Or this also gives quite a bit of flexibility in the laboratory for loading concentrations and still achieving a successful run. And then what's shown in the neighboring plot is the same, same idea, but just, just on Q40 uh, score rather than Q30 scores. And so our, our mean score on most of our runs is actually around, right at or slightly above a, a Q40 rather than Q30. So one error in 10,000 base pairs rather than one error in a thousand base pairs. So in a full order of magnitude uh, better. And I'll show you some data in a few moments of, of, of where and how that difference in quality uh, is, is best observed. The uh, sequencing chemistry is summarized here on the left. And so I'll, I'll focus on this and, and some of the highlights. The, the sequencing chemistry is a is not a sequencing by synthesis method. It is it is it is a, a sequencing by avidity method, which think think of avidity in terms of more like how antibodies bind um, in nature. Or stated differently, we separate the trapping step, which traps the avidite molecule uh, to the uh, the homologous base that's next in line to allow the sequencing base to be detected and measured. And that's what's shown in this cartoon here, where we have an interaction of multiple nucleotides in this, in what's known as a trapping step. After the detection, the avidite molecule moves away, and then the nucleotide uh, uh, strand is stepped forward by one base, and that's done with a stepping enzyme. So we actually have the stepping process and the trapping process are two completely different enzymes and two completely different steps, which allows us to have an optimal enzyme condition for both. Because we are not using fluorescently modified nucleotides, we can also use reagent concentrations that are about tenfold less than uh, competing platforms, which use a sequencing by synthesis method shown here. If you if you see if you were to see our reagents and can contrast them to some others on the market, our the reagent that holds our dye molecule is a very very light shade. You can actually see through it. It's not um, it's not a it's not a bright. Um, bright color, and that helps us keep our costs down quite low, as well as allows us to have a very strong signal-to-noise ratio as well. Because we uh, do not use a modified nucleotide and don't have to cleave off a floor, we also generate a scarless DNA molecule, which helps us control phasing and pre-phasing levels at a, at a high degree of accuracy. So this is just proof of our Q40 scores. I'll show this uh, in a little bit more detail in a moment. Where we see this in uh, data on a human genome perspective is we have industry-leading indel calling. We, we see quite a bit, uh, in, a, a strong improvement in accuracy in indel calling due to lower context errors uh, in the data. And then a very uniform uh, GC coverage, which is shown here. So what's highlighted in the red bars is 20% to 80% GC. And you can see it's very, very flat um, through these points over multiple runs. The, uh, the instrument and algorithms, um, the, one of the other differentiating features is a very large field of view in the optics as shown here. So it enables us to have very strong edge to edge performance. You can see the uniformity in these control flow cells on the dots. We developed uh, all the algorithms were developed in house as far as the spot finding and the and this high density performance, which allows that flexibility out to the 1.3 billion reads. And then finally, the instrument also has a strong telemetry system to allow both remote monitoring of uh, current and historical sequencing performance, as well as a uh, collection of telemetry data in an ongoing basis to allow historical runs and record keeping and, and even predictive analytics that allow us to observe when an instrument may need service uh, proactively. <laughs> 